So I will get started with today's webinar. Um, hello to everyone and welcome to the April edition of Dragon Trails monthly webinar series. My name is Sienna Perulis Cook and I'm the communications manager here at Dragon Trail Interactive. So by popular demand, today we'll be offering a crash course in digital advertising in China for travel brands, covering major social media platforms, OTAs and travel websites, and search engine advertising. Dragon Trail Interactive celebrates its 10th anniversary this year, and in honor of that, we are holding a two and a half day summit in Beijing next month from Sunday the 19th to Tuesday the 21st of May. It's called China, the Future of Travel, and it's time to follow directly from ITB Shanghai, which finishes the Friday before. And we can also help to book high-speed train tickets from Shanghai to Beijing for those of you who might be in China for ITB and would like to come up to Beijing for the summit. Our summit will include talks and panels from industry experts, including from Sina Weibo and the China Outbound Tourism Research Institute, Kotri, as well as experienced Chinese travelers who will be on hand to talk about their own experiences around the world. We'll also be doing several site visits to tourism companies in Beijing, and we have some optional Beijing sightseeing tours uh, set up before and after the summit for those of you who might be visiting Beijing and want to see something of the city and do some tourism while you're there, and we can help book all of those things for you as well. So if you would like to find out more about the summit, you can visit our website at chinafutureoftravel.com where we've got um, a preliminary schedule and list of speakers uh, and will be updated this week with more information about those optional tours as well as many interviews with some of the speakers who are coming and at the website you can also register for your place at the summit. If you have any specific information about um, questions about it you can always email us directly at communications at dragontrail.com. So as I mentioned earlier, my name is Sienna and I'm Dragon Trails Communications Manager. If you have attended our past webinars, you probably will have heard from me before, but just to, int to introduce myself briefly and what I do, I create most of Dragon Trail Interactive's English language educational resources for tourism professionals who want to learn more about Chinese outbound travel and Chinese digital platforms, including almost all of the reports and articles on the Dragon Trail website, our monthly webinars, and the content for our social media channels on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Last week, I also published the first quarterly report of 2019 based on our WeChat rankings for travel brands. So this report looks at travel organizations and businesses official accounts on WeChat and which brands content and strategies are doing the best for the first quarter of the year. Lately, I've also been working quite a lot on revising the book, China, the Future of Travel, which was last published in 2015. Uh, it's a handbook for the Chinese outbound tourism industry, and we will be launching a new edition for 2019 at our May Summit next month. For those of you who aren't so familiar with Dragon Trail Interactive, we are a Chinese digital marketing and solutions agency. We're focused entirely on Chinese outbound tourism. And we were founded 10 years ago in 2009. We currently have offices in Beijing, Shanghai, and Xi'an, as well as international offices in London, where I'm based, and Lexington in the US. Dragon Trail Interactive has over 70 clients on six continents, including many different industry verticals, uh, such as tourism organizations, hotels, airlines, tourist attractions, and other tourism-related organizations and businesses. So before I launch into today's webinar, uh, here's a quick outline of what we'll be talking about today. First, we'll be looking at the basics of why you should consider digital advertising in China. Next, I'll introduce how advertising works on China's two most important social media platforms, uh, that's WeChat and Weibo. And then we'll move on to advertising on OTAs, travel websites, news reading websites, and search engines. And then we'll wrap up with a checklist of the most important questions that you need to consider and ask yourself before getting into advertising in China. Uh, finally, we'll finish with a Q&A session at the end, um, where if you have additional questions, I'll do my best to answer those um, and anything else you can email us and I'll have somebody from our business development team or accounts management team that deals directly with uh, advertising and advertising related questions get back to you on those. 
Um, I would ask, as usual, um, for our webinars that if you have questions, you can actually ask them anytime throughout the webinar when you think of them. But please do ask them by using the Q&A button, which you should see on your panel on Zoom instead of asking them through the chat function. And the reason for this is because if you ask through the Q&A button, then we can see all of the questions afterwards and make sure that they're logged and answered, um, whereas they tend to get lost using uh, the chat function. So please do use the Q&A button for those. Um, today we will be getting through quite a lot of information and there's a lot of detailed numbers on things like click-through rates and cost per click, um, which will be on the screen. I won't necessarily go into the details of all of those numbers, um, but don't worry about trying to write them all down or remember them all, um, because as usual, we will also be sending a PDF of all of the webinar slides as well as a link to a recording of the webinar to all participants in the coming days. So you'll have that to review um, or also share with other colleagues who you think might be interested in the webinar content. So first of all, why should you consider digital advertising in China as a travel brand? First of all, if you're advertising at all in China, it should be digital and ideally it should also be mobile. Digital advertising is nearly 70% or Chinese advertising is nearly 70% digital this year compared to a global average of only around 50%. Moreover, nearly all Chinese internet users get online through a mobile device and the large majority of online travel booking is also done through mobile. So mobile friendly ads are really the way to go. And they're also growing fastest among all advertising categories in China. We can see that mobile ads are predicted to, uh, spending on mobile ads is predicted to increase by over 25% this year compared to a 22% increase in digital ads and only a 14.5% increase in all media ads, uh, including print and digital. So advertising can help you realize a number of different kinds of goals. And so in this way, it suits different kinds of travel organizations and businesses, depending on what you hope to accomplish. Um, and first of all, there's advertising to promote branding and awareness, as well as getting more social media account followers. This is most appropriate for destinations, but it can also be applicable to other brands uh, like hotels that maybe have less brand awareness in China and want to um, get their name out there and have more awareness among Chinese consumers. The other kind of advertising is sales focused. And this would be for specific promotions or products. It's most suitable for brands with very high sales pressure, such as airlines or hotels that already do have a strong brand awareness presence in China um, and uh, potentially attractions as well. So now we'll move on to talking about social media advertising in China. And obviously China has a lot of different social media platforms, but for today's webinar, I will only be discussing WeChat and Weibo. And that's because these are the two most important platforms to use and understand. And they both offer a number of different kinds of advertising options to go through as well. So it's already quite a lot to take in. Uh, but if you do have questions about advertising on some of the other social media platforms in China, you can always ask us directly after the webinar by emailing communications at dragontrail.com. Um, or if you ask in the, the q and I might have some information about that, but it might be better to get back to you with more information um, detailed around your questions after the webinar itself. So why would you want to advertise on WeChat? So WeChat is China's most used social media platform um, and it has over a billion monthly active users, but it does have some limitations. It can be very slow to grow followers on WeChat and grow brand awareness and your content reach organically, even if the content is really, really good. And this is because of the closed peer-to-peer -peer nature of the platform which makes it hard for content and accounts to really spread outside of the circle of people who are already using them. Although WeChat is working on this a little bit, it's pretty much impossible for something to really go viral on WeChat. So advertising is one way that can help you to speed up these processes to attract new followers to your account and 
um, publish your content to a wider number of people and also help to encourage purchases through WeChat if you're the kind of brand that's set up to do booking directly through WeChat, such as an airline or a hotel account. So WeChat offers three different kinds of ad formats. The first one is moments ads, where the ads are displayed in the user's moments feed. The moments feed on WeChat is similar to the Facebook timeline. The second is banner advertising in articles published by WeChat official accounts. So this would not be an advertisement within an article by your own official account, but it would be an advertisement placed at the end of an article by a different official account. And we'll talk a bit more later about kind of how to choose the official account where your ad would be displayed. And then finally, the third kind of ad on WeChat is one click to follow ads. And these are also displayed um, at the bottom of the content from another official account, and they are meant to drive fan acquisition for your WeChat official account. So to talk in more detail about the WeChat Moments ads, um, the purpose of these ads is to drive branding and engagement to a targeted audience in their moments feed. Now the moments feed, uh, like the Facebook timeline, is the most used um, part of WeChat and most WeChat users are likely to check their moments feed multiple times a day. So this is a very visible area. Um, in these kinds of ads, you can put text, uh, links, images, and videos, and pricing is based on cost per uh, CPM, which is cost per thousand impressions. And we'll talk a bit more about the details of the cost later. Um, in general, um, any kind of content with video will cost more than content without video. Video is something that really does drive more user engagement and we've started to see, um, not just through advertising, but through organic content as well, more WeChat official accounts starting to use video content very effectively in WeChat and getting more views and impressions for their content that way. So while it is more expensive, it's something to consider because it may actually reach more people and be more engaging. So here are some examples of WeChat Moments ads from the airline Knock Scoot. So at the top, you can see, first of all, uh, the account name for the official account for Knock Scoot. And then there's a small marker, um, which is marked as number two here, that just says ad in Chinese to show that it's an ad. And then below that, you have the ad copy, which is some text, and then the ad creative, which can be a photo or a video. Uh, finally, there's a link to a landing page. So specifically, if you are promoting a sales campaign, you might want uh, a landing page that users can click on that can go directly to somewhere to buy tickets, for instance, that have to do with that campaign. Um, and then at the bottom, like with all posts on WeChat Moments, there's a button for social interaction where users can comment or like the ad. Uh, furthermore, WeChat has just launched a new feature where users can tag their friends in ads that they like. Um, and so this is another way that will be kind of spreading um, the um, awareness of that kind of content. As I mentioned earlier, ads can be used for different kinds of goals, including promoting an offer or a product, driving followers to a WeChat account, or promoting a video. And here we have pictures that show examples of all three of those different kinds of things um, and ads that have been used in WeChat moments um, for each of those different kinds of goals and how they look. I'm not going to go through all of this pricing chart uh, because as you can see, there are quite a lot of numbers and variables here. Uh, but as I mentioned before, you will get a PDF of this PowerPoint after the webinar. So you will have all of these numbers for reference. But we'll just take a quick look to give you an idea of how pricing works in terms of WeChat Moments ads. So basically for any campaign without video, your minimum spend is going to be 10,000 US dollars. And you almost always need a verified official account on WeChat to be able to have WeChat ads. Of course, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do ads on WeChat if then it doesn't link to your own account. So I think that should be fairly obvious. Um, and to have an official account on 
uh, WeChat for an overseas organization, it needs to be verified anyway, just to have it at all. Uh, so pricing also depends on where the users are located. Um, I'm not talking about geolocation just at the time, but where the users are generally based and where their account is registered from. So if you want to target people in uh, the biggest first tier cities, which are the most affluent and where Chinese outbound travelers are the most likely to live, that does cost more. And then there's a uh, slightly lower pricing for other kinds of major cities, which also include places that have a lot of Chinese outbound tourists. And then it's cheapest if you want to target um, users in lower tier cities where there might not be so many travelers. So the second kind of WeChat ad is a display ad where you have a banner ad at the bottom of an article by a different official account. And you do have choices about what kind of account to target. Um, you can't choose a specific account. So for instance, if you are a cruise line, you, you can't choose to have your ad at the bottom of an article by your number one competitor cruise line. However, you can choose for your ad to be displayed in an account that's related to travel and tourism, in an account that's related to luxury, and so in that way you can kind of target the right demographic that you want to see your ad. And these kinds of display ads um, within official accounts uh, content are most, they're best for driving traffic to a specific campaign. The third kind of WeChat ad is the one click to follow ad. And the purpose of this is really for growing your WeChat fan base. So let's say you're producing a lot of great content on WeChat already, but your fan base is very small and you want to encourage more people to follow your account and see your great content. So this would be the, um, a kind of ad that does that directly. So on, um, let's see, um, I'll just go to the example here so you can see how the ads work. So on the ads, there's a button that you can click on to follow the account immediately when seeing the ad without having to do anything else. But then there's also an option where users can click to go see your account. So they'll see some introduction uh, that you give to your account as well as your last three article posts and then they can decide if they want to follow you or not. So just like the um, display ads that we saw before, these one click to follow ads are placed at the bottom of content by a different official account and can be targeted in exactly the same way. So apart from targeting the type of um, official account type when you're doing um, those kinds of display ads, there are also a lot of other targeting options that you have when using WeChat ads, and these are specifically relevant for the WeChat Moments ads. So you can choose to target users based on their demographic information, on their interests, which are um, gathered um, through WeChat, through the data that WeChat has based on other accounts uh, that the user will follow, and the, their kinds of activity on WeChat. And you can also base uh, your targeting on users behavior, on their location, even on their phone type. Um, for instance, if they have an iOS or Android or how expensive their phone is. Uh, so there really are a lot of uh, choices there. Moving on to Weibo, this is China's second most important social media platform. It's very strong with younger generations, it's very strong for video content, and it is favored by KOL, so travel influencers and other kinds of influencers, because Weibo provides a much larger exposure than WeChat thanks to the openness of its platform. Um, Weibo is very similar to Twitter and you're much more likely for a post to go viral and really get um, you know, thousands or tens and thousands of views on Weibo, uh, which is very hard to achieve on WeChat. Weibo offers four different kinds of ad formats. There's fans tongue, fans headline, Weibo search, and official campaigns. And now we'll go through each of those and see how they work and are different from each other. So first of all, Fans Tong serves your content to the news feeds of Weibo users according to your targeting criteria. So this allows you to reach a wider audience than your posts already do. And you can even target followers of similar or specific competitor accounts. Um, so this is really useful for getting exactly the kind of people who you think 
might like to see your content or be interested in your product or destination. Fans headline is the second kind of Weibo ad, and this one promotes your post to your existing followers. And how it does that is it places the post at the top of their news feeds for 24 hours. And this is most effective for certain posts that you really want people to see and share, um, perhaps some kind of content that you think might go viral. Uh, if a very famous and popular Chinese celebrity is visiting your destination, for instance. Um, and it's also a very good kind of ad format if you have a specific promotion that you want people to see to encourage them to buy something or share that promotion uh, with their um, uh, circle on Weibo as well. Weibo search is similar to SEM on a search engine and it puts your account and an ad banner and content first when users search for your brand name or related keywords on Weibo. Finally, uh, the Weibo official campaign ads are tied to uh, Sina, Sina Weibo. So Sina is the company that owns Weibo. It's their annual travel campaign where they'll have a lot of content relating to travel um, all around the world. And it's a time of year where they're really promoting travel very heavily on the platform. And so it's a good time of year also to do some branded promotions together with Weibo uh, to raise brand awareness. So of course, advertising is one good way to promote your brand and or product on social media, but we would also recommend working with influencer accounts to help with brand awareness or sales campaigns or actually a mix of the two. So this is another way to pay for greater exposure, but it's more media buy um, rather than advertising buy. So when we talk about influencers and KOLs, I think for most people, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, for instance, a, a stylish Chinese traveler who goes around the world and takes beautiful pictures of themselves in different destinations. And this kind of KOL or travel influencer um, is very good for promoting brand awareness. However, there are different influencer accounts on Chinese social media channels that are more sales focused. So for instance, they might publish um, really good deals on different travel products or specifically around a certain theme like deals on family travel, information on family travel. And some of these accounts are totally sales focused. Some of them do a little bit more with brand awareness as well as sales promotions. And so working with um, these kinds of accounts uh, can be a very good way to help you spread your message to a targeted audience uh, in a way that's slightly different than advertising. Uh, and Chinese web users are very receptive actually to influence our advertising. Um, so this is just one more option for media buying. So moving on from WeChat and Weibo, there are lots of other choices for digital advertising in China. And here I'll be giving an overview of some of the biggest channels. So first of all, for travel brands, there is, of course, OTAs, online travel agencies. And here you can catch consumers that already have the intention to travel at the research stage or at the booking stage of their trips. So C-Trip uh, is the market leader, OTA, and it's especially relevant for outbound travel and particularly for hotel and flight bookings, although they are starting to move more into activities and attractions as well. Advertising on C-Trip is very expensive. It starts um, with a minimum spend of around 45,000 US dollars or 300,000 renminbi. Uh, another thing about WeChat, I'm sorry, C-Trip advertising, um, is that there's no real set pricing for certain kinds of ads. The way it works is that uh, you get in touch with them and they will create a personalized proposal that's based on your different objectives and um, and give that to you for your consideration and then it's something that you can kind of negotiate together with them. So that here there's no price list the way you can see for WeChat Moments ads. Um, so here on the screen, um, I just got an example of how an ad might look on C-Trip on the C-Trip homepage. And so this ad is advertising direct flights between Beijing and Las Vegas. And um, the ad is done in collaboration with C-Trip itself with Hainan Airlines, who does the direct flights. 
um, with the Las Vegas uh, Tourism Board as well as Brand USA. So of course there are many other OTAs, not just CTRIP, that you could consider um, working with and get a quote from too, including Tunio and Chunar, which I have examples from here. Um, these other OTAs also work similarly to CTRIP in which there's no set price list, but rather you contact them and they create a package for you and then you decide if you want to go with that advertising package or not. Um, so Chunar is slightly more of a domestic focused uh, OTA, although it is uh, the second largest OTA in China. Um, it used to be a big competitor with CTRIP, but now CTRIP owns most of Chunar and has made it a little bit more domestic focused so that they're not quite in such competition. However, Chunar does have overseas travel products as well. And the ad here on Chunar is interesting in that it, um, it links to a family travel promotion recommending different tra family travel products around China. And it's been sponsored by Geely Auto, which is a Hangzhou-based car brand, as well as the city of Hangzhou. And then above, you can see a homepage ad on Tunio, which looks very similar to the homepage ad that we saw on Trip, and that one is for Disneyland Paris. China also has important travel review websites, which also function to some extent as OTAs, especially for the accommodation sector. So these are Chongyou and Mafangwo. Uh, we do talk about these quite a lot in drag and trail content and webinars, so you have probably heard about them before. Both of these websites are most popular with millennials, with independent travelers, and people working in white collar jobs. Travelers will often visit these websites for research and inspiration, especially to find out more information about a certain destination, or perhaps when they're making a decision between several destinations that they're interested in traveling in. Since there's um, just a lot of listings and information, there are down, uh, guides that you can download for free on Chongyo. There is a user Q&A forum and many different uh, user uh, generated content such as travel diaries that can be used for reference materials as well. And um, although they are most often used in the research and inspiration stage, these websites may also be used in destination. Uh, once their user has already reached the destination and wants to find out more information about things like the attractions or the restaurants in that destination once they're already there. Mafang Wu and Chongyo offer a lot of different advertising choices, which you can see here highlighted in yellow. Uh, and these include many different types of banner ads as well as push notifications. Based on Dragon Trail's own experience doing ad placement on some of these travel review websites, we do have some tips on banner advertising that we can share. Um, although across all of these different platforms, things like uh, CPC, cost per click, and CTR click-through rate tend to differ a lot among different industry verticals. Ma Fangwa does advise that the click-through rate benchmark for banner ads should be between 0.63 and 0.89%. So if you do have a banner ad um, on Ma Fangwa or uh, maybe on Chongyo, which is a similar website too, you can use that as a benchmark to understand how well your ad is performing. Although if you do place ads on these kinds of websites, of course, they'll give you more information about benchmarks and what you should expect um, and your own ads performance too. Um, based on our own experience, we found that banner ads that are placed within Ma Fangwa's app tend to get a higher click-through rate than those placed on the Ma Fangwa website, and this includes the mobile website. So that gives you some idea that maybe people who are using the app rather than browsing the website have more intention to buy or are just more willing to click through um, onto ads. We've also found that banner ads that have photos get a higher click-through rate than those without. Um, of course, it's not just any photo, but it should be an appealing and inspiring photo that says something about your brand and would attract people to learn more about it. Travel websites also allow you to supplement ads with sponsored content which will come up when users search for a related destination. So the example here is a sponsored article from the Robinson Club resort chain, 
And the article topic is about what an all-inclusive resort includes, um, because they're trying to familiarize a Chinese audience with their brand. And this article was published on the destination section of Mafangwa in Southeast Asia, as Mafangwa has new resorts in Southeast Asia, specifically one in Thailand that they wanted to promote to a Chinese audience. And this article, as you can see, had nearly 65,000 views uh, when the screenshot was taken during the promotion period. Um, and Ma Fengwo advises that sponsored articles have an average view rate of 2.5%. Uh, you may have also heard of news reading platforms in China, uh, which have been quite popular in recent years and which offer curated news content based on users' interests and their selected media sources. So these news reading platforms are definitely, they're not travel focused, they're more general, um, but they can do a lot to increase audience for specific kinds of posts and uh, they can do a lot uh, to increase general exposure and target selected users. So today's headline is the leading news reading platform in China. And you can see some examples here of how ads look on um, the today's headline app. There are, of course, other news reading apps, um, and these include Tencent News, which you can see here um, what their website looks like with the ad circled in red. So that's how the ad display looks like there. And there's also um, a Baidu news feed. So this brings us to Baidu, which is China's leading search engine. Um, there are, of course, other search engines in China, but Baidu is very strongly the market leader. Um, if you are thinking about advertising with other search engines at, um, as well, some of the bigger ones include Sogo and 360 Search, but it's also important to keep in mind that these other search engines tend to attract much younger users. Um, and today I'm only going to focus on Baidu um, as the most important search engine in China. So, if you want to do display ads and SEM on Baidu, first of all, you must have a Chinese website that those ads can link to. Otherwise, it's really not worth doing those kinds of ads at all. Also, you need to be allowed to register for a Baidu account. This should be absolutely fine for most travel brands, um, but it's not allowed for any kind of brand that does activities that are illegal in China, and this includes gambling. So um, Baidu ads are not really an option for casinos or even hotels that have casinos in them since gambling is illegal in China. Uh, finally, you'll need a minimum investment of 3,000 US dollars as a foreign company to start advertising on Baidu. Baidu offers lots of different kinds of ad formats, and these all look different from each other. One of the major ones is called the brands area advertising, and this is when a company is listed as the top search result. Um, we can see here um, the search result in the brands area for Zuzu Chu, which is a Chinese car rental platform. And there is um, obviously a link to the homepage for Zuzu Chu, as well as an image and some text, and then also some related links below. Uh, Baidu also offers keyword advertising, um, display ads like the box that you can see advertising Zuzu Chu to um, the right of its brand area advertising uh, on the picture here. Baidu also has newsfeed ads um, and ads that show up as suggested links next to related search results. Um, and many other kinds of options too. So um, in this slide, you can see a couple of different, very sl different, uh, slightly different formats of ads on Baidu um, for search results ads. So in the first one at the top for Tmall, which is a shopping platform in China, um, this is a kind of brands area ad, but you can, or a search result ad, where you can see the homepage and some text about the company as well as the picture. And then below it is a very similar, but very slightly different um, ad for C-Trip, the OTA 
um, where you have all of the same things as Tmall, but they also have uh, related links that take you to specific landing pages of the CTRIP website for booking airplane tickets or train tickets, as well as direct links to certain hotel chains. To further illustrate some of the ways that Baidu ads work, um, we have a case study of an ad campaign from 2017 by Norwegian Cruise Lines. At the very top image here, on the left-hand side, you can see the brand zone ad that is displayed when users search for um, Norwegian Cruise Lines Chinese ship, Norwegian Joy. And so there again, you see a picture for New Region Cruise Line with their logo, some text about the brand, a link to the homepage, and then some related uh, links that are below that. And then to the right, there's also a display ad um, with an image and some other links too. Now looking at the images at the bottom, first of all, there is a search result ad that comes up if users searched for cruise travel. Um, the first search result that came up was for Norwegian Cruise Lines with a picture of Norwegian Joy, their purpose-built Chinese ship. Um, and then there are also some advertisements uh, in search results that come up with different pictures and each of those different pictures and the related links are about different kinds of amenities um, or services on uh, Norwegian cruise lines. So how exactly do these ads work and what kinds of results can you expect to get from them? So here we have a couple of charts from that ad campaign in 2017 by uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines, where you can compare their performance with some of their competitors' performances. And um, Norwegian Cruise Lines is, they're the orange line in both of these charts. In the top chart, we can see click-through rate, and this compares Norwegian Cruise Line to uh, Royal Caribbean, which is one of the leading cruise lines in China, that line is blue, and the gray line is Princess Cruises. So for almost all of the ad campaign period, we can see that the click-through rate was highest for Norwegian Cruise Line. Um, then in the bottom picture is the CPC, the cost per click, and we can also see that during the time frame of the campaign, the cost per click was much lower for Norwegian Cruise Line than it was for Princess Cruises, which is the line in blue. So it's very hard to give very specific information about what things like a click-through rate or the cost per click should be for each specific brand because this varies wildly depending on what kind of industry, vertical, and company you are. Um, so it can be easiest to look at it this way by comparing yourself to competitors. Um, and this is something that is available uh, through the back end of Baidu advertising. Um, also, just on index.baidu.com, you can get some free services um, like comparing uh, search queries for up to five different search terms at the same time. And so that can be a good way to do a little bit of competitor analysis, uh, whether or not it's related to advertising. Um, I would say, though, in general, that hotels and airlines do tend to have a higher cost per click than other kinds of travel brands on Baidu. And another way to see if your ads are effective um, is to look at things like bounce rate and time spent on the site and compare these statistics with people who are coming from the ads versus people who are coming from other channels. So uh, that's exactly the same way it would work um, using Google Analytics and Google Ads. So finally, what are the most important things to consider before doing digital advertising in China? When choosing a platform um, and choosing the kind of ads you run, there are a number of different questions that you need to answer. Um, the first one is, does advertising suit your brand? If you're a casino or if you're a medical provider, um, for instance, uh, WeChat does not allow any ads for medical products, um, the answer is probably no. Um, then you also need to make sure that you have the right kind of Chinese digital platform set up to suit the kind of advertising that you want to do. So for instance, if you want to do SEM advertising on Baidu, you must have a Chinese language website. Um, if you want to do advertising on social media like Weibo or WeChat, you have to make sure that you have accounts on those platforms. 
and you'll also need adequate budget. So as you've seen, um, prices can be very high and this also depends on which platform you're doing the advertising to. Um, so really, if you are a big brand, um, advertising can work very well, but if you're a small company that's just getting started, um, advertising might be, uh, it's a difficult place to start and you might think about doing some kind of um, paid promotion with a travel influencer instead to start getting the word out that way and uh, building up your brand awareness. Um, so secondly, um, when choosing a platform and the kind of ads you're running, um, you need to think about what your goals are. Uh, do you want to promote a specific product um, or sales promotion, or do you just want to increase brand awareness, or do you want to drive new followers to your social media account? Uh, these are all things to take into consideration. Um, and then where do you want to catch consumers in the travel purchasing cycle? Uh, do you want to get them when they're on sea trip ready to book their hotel or when they haven't even decided where they want to travel yet and they're maybe deciding between a couple of locations or do you want to catch them when they're just reading the news and they're not even thinking about traveling and you catch their eye um, with a beautiful image or a promotion that looks like something that distracts them from the news and makes them uh, want to travel instead. So those will all influence the kinds of platforms that you use. And then finally, which consumer segments do you want to target? Obviously, we've seen that a lot of these platforms give you many different targeting options, uh, but even when choosing the platform, you'll be thinking about who you want to target as well. So for instance, if senior travelers are your market, um, Platforms like Chongyo or Weibo might not be ideal. However, if you are trying to target 30 year olds who travel independently and live in first tier cities and have white collar jobs, then Chongyo would be the ideal kind of platform. There are also lots of considerations for creating your campaigns once you've decided to advertise. Um, first of all, you need to think about timing and what the high season is for Chinese tourists to your destination or what season you want to attract them to visit your destination. Um, when thinking about this, you will also need to consider when most Chinese travelers have long periods of time off. And then you need to think about the planning um, the length of time they need for planning to visit your specific destination. So for example, if you are a Southeast Asian destination that is quite close and easy to get to from China, you can consider doing things like a last minute deal. So last minute hotel reservation, last minute flight reservations. However, if you are a long haul travel destination, especially the kind of destination where Chinese travelers will need to apply for a visa to visit you, um, you'll need to be thinking about running an ad campaign um, at least one to two months ahead of the period uh, that you want them to visit you. Uh, finally, your ad format or formats will also, of course, be influenced by your brand's own goals um, and do consider the efficacy of good and inspiring imagery, especially photos, as well as the kind of design that will catch the eye of your target demographic the best. So of course, ads need to be supported with good content as well from your own account. And we also strongly recommend working with travel influencers um, so that they can create content as well and help you to reach an even larger audience and really build up your brand image. I won't go so much into content here because Content is actually what we usually talk about um, at Dragon Trail in our articles and webinars. And there's quite a lot of information, especially on, in terms of WeChat content in our quarterly and annual reports on the WeChat rankings. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our first quarterly report for 2019 just came out last week. So there you can find more information about the kind of content themes, and uh, the kinds of imagery that seem to resonate the best with your audience. Um, so, um, of course, the ad is a good way to drive them to the content, uh, but it just can't be an ad. Um, it needs to have something else behind it. So, of course, there is a lot to take in um, today with all of this information. Uh, and there's a lot to consider if you're thinking about doing advertising in China. So one of the services that Dragon Trail Interactive provides is media and ad buy. 
we can help put together packages, we can liaise with companies like Baidu and Ctrip on your behalf, and also advise you on which kinds of platforms we think will give you the highest return on investment based on the goals of your brand or organization. So please do get in touch with us directly at communications at dragontrail.com if you're interested in our service services in terms of advertising or other services as well, or if you have more detailed questions about how we can help you specifically with your advertising needs. Uh, before we move on to the Q&A, um, I'll just announce that in May, we actually will not be running our monthly webinar series. Uh, we'll be taking a break because we have the summit, China, the future of travel coming up in Beijing. However, we will be live streaming um, from some of the sessions at the summit. So please stay tuned to our website, chinafutureoftravel.com, as well as our social media channels to find out more on uh, 